All right. Hi, everybody. Ooh, let me get this started for you. All right. We're on concept 2.7, your final concept of unit two. It's a pretty quick one and relatively simple to understand. We call it the business cycle. The business cycle is really just a theory about how our economy moves over time, right? Over time, our economy has expansion and peaks, like our economy is doing well, where oftentimes this is called recovery. And then we have times of recession where that troughs out and then expansion. And what we've discovered, I say we like I was involved, what I personally individually discovered is that over time, we actually see a trend. So the business cycle is both those four elements, what's happening, expansion, peak, recession, trough, and then the overall trend line that happens over time. So let's get into it. Here's what the business cycle looks like. On the Y to the sky axis is level of real output, which we know is just real GDP over time. When real GDP is going up, we know we are in a moment of expansion. Our economy is growing. We call it economic growth. But we've also found that at some point we hit a peak, right? Economy peaks out. And we say, at this time, normally somebody is saying, hey, this might be too good to be true. Uh, and there might be an indicator. Somebody's like, maybe this might pull the plug out of our gains, right? Or recently, hey, people are getting sick. What's this all about? And then after the peak, you hit a recession. And when you hit a recession, that's when GDP starts falling, right? That gives us our recession. When GDP falls, it continues to fall until we bottom out. We call this part a trough. When you hit the trough, it means you're at the bottom of your economic recession. Things can't get any worse than this. And really, that bottom is just defined by when people feel comfortable enough to start spending again, right? And then when people start spending again, we go through an expansion, and then we hit a peak, and then a recession, and then a trough, and then expansion, and a peak. And really, our business cycle represents kind of the self-fulfilling prophecy that we have in our economy. Right In our economy, our economic engine runs based on the confidence of the American consumer. So when people are really confident, they're going out and they're spending their money. Right, They get money, they spend it because I'm going to keep my job, my job is stable, I can do a budget and I can rely on it and say, okay, I have this much money to spend and I'm going to spend that money. That's when we fall into expansions. And then we hit some sort of peak and normally somebody that's influential starts to say things like, ah, maybe this is too good to be true, or there's a discovery of something that maybe could be an indicator of an economic downturn. And at this point, some confidence starts to erode. Sometimes this can happen from a stock market crash. Sometimes it can happen from a bubble bursting, like, hey, we thought this was valued at this, but it's not valued at that anymore. And what happens is there's a crisis of confidence. People lose their confidence in the economy. They start to see people get laid off and like, oh no, could I be next? Instead of spending their money, people save their money. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. When people save their money, businesses don't have profits. So businesses lay people off, which gives people even less confidence. So even more people start saving their money and on and on and on it goes. Then at the very bottom, we have maximum unemployment at this point. A lot of people are out of a job. And then something starts to go well. Right. And we all look at it because we're hopeful people and we say, maybe this is the end of the recession and people start to have hope and start to see some gains like the unemployment rate is a little bit lower than we expected or the consumer spending is a little better than we thought it was going to be. And now we all latch on to that and say, hey, we can have confidence in our economy now. And we start spending again. And then other people see the increased metrics and like, hey, things are good. And they start spending again and then businesses make more money. So they start hiring. We say, look at how good that is. And we have this expansion in our economy. Eventually, we get to the peak. At the peak, we have maximum inflation. This is that demand pull inflation that we're talking about. Inflation is very high at the peak because spending is very high, right? We're spending a lot of money. And then somebody says something or there's an indicator that looks like it might indicate a recession. And boom, we're back in a recession. Trough, expansion, peak. The other thing that you have to keep in mind, so at the trough, sorry, at the trough, maximum unemployment. At the peak, maximum inflation, right? And on and on we go. So there you go. At the top, at the peak, maximum, low unemployment, full efficiency, rising inflation. At the bottom, temporary bottom, that's our trough, high unemployment, stagnant price level at that point. Repeat. The final thing you need to know is that over time, we have an upward trend. Even though we have expansion and recession and expansion, peak, 
recession trough, expansion peak, recession trough, even though we know that's what's going to happen with our economy, that we're always waiting for the next expansion. When we're expanding, we're always waiting for the next recession. Even though we know that's going to be the case, over time, our economy still grows. This is our GDP over time. The trend line is still economic growth. Yes, we have recessions, but and yes, we have expansion. But overall, over time, this averages out for economic growth. That's a key takeaway here. So that's a business cycle, right? Know that it's this squiggle up and down like a roller coaster, and it's going up in an upward trend. And be able to label those four areas, the peak, the recession, the trough, the expansion, and know that at the peak, there's very low unemployment and rising inflation, and we're at full efficiency. We're on the production possibility curve. And then the trough, we're inside of that. We're in a recession, really bad. We have high unemployment, but our price level is relatively stable because people aren't spending money. Here's what it actually looks like. This is the UK. Um, so some people say, hey, business cycle is not a great term for this. It's more like fluctuation. So we have a recession and then we have expansion and then a little recession, expansion, recession, expansion, recession, expansion, 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 recession. It's not quite as clean as that trend line that we're talking about, but the trend line definitely communicates the overall feel of what's going on with our economy. Okay, cyclical impact. Not everything is impacted by a recession in the same way or an expansion in the same way. So how does a recession impact certain industries and household spending? Let's get into it. Ooh. The first thing is when we have durable goods like houses, cars, uh, you know, furniture, all of those things that last longer than five years and normally are higher price items. When we fall into a recession, people put off the purchase of these things. So you're going to see fewer cars being bought. You're going to see fewer houses being purchased, fewer of these high priced durable goods. So there's actually a very high impact direct relationship here when we fall into a recession the consumption of durable goods falls. And then when we expand, the purchasing or consumption of durable goods expands as well. So there's a very high impact on those things because we normally they're higher price, so we don't want to spend the money and we can put off that purchase. We don't need that new house today. We don't absolutely need that furniture today. Okay. Uh, services are kind of hit and miss, right? Some services that are more like luxuries, like, hey, I'm going to get a massage. That's going to have a very high impact, right? I'm not going to get a massage, which is a luxury when um, there's a giant recession going on. Uh, but medical services are highly necessary, and lawyers, you know, for bankruptcies are highly necessary. So they have they're very recession proof, right? They actually do better in times of recession. So services are hit and miss. The difference is: is it a luxury or a necessity? Okay, if it's a luxury, it's highly susceptible. Non-durable goods, there's actually very little impact. The things that we need to consume all the time, uh, we actually continue to buy, right? Just because there's a recession doesn't mean you don't need gasoline for your car to get from point A to point B. Now, if you're laid off, maybe that's the case, but normally that's not enough to move the needle for our national economy. The same thing with food. You got to eat, right? You got to buy things and consume things so people actually consume more. What's interesting is during a recession, uh, people actually buy more fast food than ever before. Um, so uh, it actually has a reverse effect on some non-durable goods, but very recession proof these durable goods are or non-durable goods are. Short-term goods, we still buy them because we still need them. Okay, uh, that's it. There are some rats uh, playing saxophone and French horn. Uh, know your business cycle, know it well. There's a Khan Academy for you. Remember Khan Academies are intentionally difficult, but they're only four questions long. It's all about the business cycle. No expansion, peak, recession, trough. Know when unemployment's at its highest, trough. And when inflation's at its highest, peak. Know those things. And then know that it affects good, durable goods dramatically, non-durable goods not so dramatically. And then services, it just depends. It's a luxury. It's a dramatic impact. If it's a necessity, it's not a dramatic impact. That's it. You're done with unit two. Congratulations. See you soon.